When one of our menu items is tapped, we want to bring in a new screen with more information about that item. Porridge Deluxe, Full English, or whatever. Now in contentview.swift, we already placed our list here inside this navigation view. As a result, we can use a new view called a navigation link to show a new kind of screen, whatever detailed text we want to show. And this works by providing a destination, what, what do you want to show? And then what is the action to show that? What's inside, visibly on the screen? What should be pressed? Now in practice, this looks like every other container we've used so far, like navigation view, list for each section and so forth, a thing, open brace, contents, end brace. And so uh, we already have this item row, one row in our table. I'm gonna put around that our navigation link. So I'll say navigation link, destination of text item dot name, open brace, and put the item row inside the link, then end the brace. That means the whole row is a navigation link. The whole row can be tapped to show our destination. Now, I'll press Command R to build and run our code again, and you should hopefully see it looks different. First up, notice how you can see disclosure indicators now down the right-hand side of each one of our items, saying, yes, this can be tapped to bring a new screen on. But also, when you tap it, boom, in slides, maple French toast. We'll go back in slides, uh, Tower Burger or similar. So this already works. And I think being able to present simple text views, just, just show text item.name is really, really great. Obviously it's not the final product by any means, but it's great prototyping to get that look and feel exactly right while you haven't built the detail screen just yet. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna design a new view to show our item text properly in detail with pictures and more attached to it. As with item row, this thing here, this is going to be a new Swift UI view. So go ahead and press Command N, make a new file. Choose Swift UI view again and press next. And call this thing item detail and press create. Now, as with the item row, this is going to have one property, the item we want to actually show in detail on this screen. So I have a property here, let item be a menu item like that. And again, as with item row, we want to provide the same thing in our preview code so it knows how to preview this screen. So I'll say the item detail item is menu item dot example, one I made earlier. Now, uh, as with our list row, we're gonna start off nice and simple and build our way up step by step until we have something that works well. So first, sorry, my dogs have arrived. <laughs> Hello dogs, and um, what do you want? I know what you want, you want a treat. Sorry, one second, let me just give a dog a treat. Why are you wearing a little dog coat? Does that mean you're going out for a walk soon? There you go, good dog. Anyway, um, a simple version of our item detail thing has the item's image and description plus a title at the top. A title that you can uh, see what the thing is nice and clearly. There you go, go. Okay, let's do that now. We'll say in our body, there is a vertical stack of stuff. Inside there we'll have an image uh, showing item dot main image. I press Option Command P to start previewing, so you can see what I'm doing as I'm working. Then a uh, text of item dot description below that, boom, and then a navigation title of item dot name, so you can see what the title of the screen is. So you can see it already starting to come together nicely, and we can start using that immediately. <laughs> You've had some tweets already, a little horror. We can start using that immediately. We can go back to um, our item uh, row here in a, a content view and say our destination shouldn't be the text item name. It should be item detail. Item is our current item, like that. Link to that screen rather than just the plain text of the item. And now press Command R and see how it looks. So I'll choose Stack of Pancakes. Boom, there we go, our title here and text. I'll choose Tower Burger. Very, very similar, which is great. Now, what you might notice if you look very carefully was when I was looking at um, item detail here on this preview screen, uh, I didn't see a title up here. 
That's because our preview doesn't understand we're in a navigation view. It doesn't know that. Our runtime app does, because we place it in the first screen, so it's in the second screen as well, but our preview does not. And so if you want a preview with a navigation view in place, you can see the title, just modify the preview. Place it into the preview rather than into the view itself, because it's just for previewing purposes. So we can say there is a navigation view here, like that. So it's inside the preview, but not in the actual application, just so we can see how it looks. Okay, you can see our detail view has got a, a, a few layout issues, so let's try and correct them. First, this title up here, Maple French Toast, Apple's design guidelines say that thing should not be large. It should be small. This large title approach should only be used for the initial screen in the application. When you push detail views, it should not be large. We can modify that with a new modifier below navigation title. We can say here, I want to have navigation bar title display mode. And I want dot inline. I want the small style navigation bar. That's how it should work in iOS. So the first screen is big, subsequent screens, second, third, fourth, and so forth are small like that. Second, having our image go mostly edge to edge looks good. <laughs> You're in a woo for treats now, are you? Come on. Uh, it looks pretty good. But having the text go to edge to edge does not look so good. Oh, hello, other dog. <laughs> Great. <laughs> look, come on, come on, you. There you go, good girl. Yeah, okay. Having the text go right to the edge of the screen looks a bit weird, right? Picture edge to edge, fine. Text edge to edge, a bit weird. So let's have a look here at um, full English. Picture looks fine. Text at the very edge looks strange. And so what we want to do really is add some padding around. <laughs> Get off, doggo. Get out, out. Both of you leave, come on. Add some padding around our item description. Just push that in from the edges. I'll preview that. Boom. So it's padding on all four sides like that. And if you want to, you can control which sides it applies. So you could say top or bottom or leading or trailing. You've seen how we can apply different amounts of padding. It, it's all good. Um, here though, just general padding is fine. Uh, third problem, it looks really strange having this text and picture in the middle of our view rather than sort of push to the top. So we can say actually, I want to have a spacer here after the description, push everything to the top of the screen. So it's aligned to the top. And this is starting to look good, I think, um, but there's still more to do. For example, uh, this picture here was taken by a photographer. I'm looking, it looks really, really good. Um, what we want to do is actually show their photo credit above the picture, who took the picture, uh, showing their name. And we can do this with a new kind of stack. You've seen H stack already, horizontal stuff. You've seen V stack, vertical stuff. It's now time for a Z stack or a Z stack for uh, Zepth. Or, or, or depth, and this lets us create overlapping views, one view on top of another in, in depth. And so to do that, we're going to uh, wrap our main image here right now inside a Z stack, like that. And after the image that so appears on top, I'll place a new text view saying, the photo uh, is by Screen interpolation image dot photo credit. Now, this is going to uh, render the. Uh, it's complaining at me for some reason. Why are you complaining at me? Oh, sorry, image item. My mistake. Item. There we go. It's going to render the uh, photo credit on top of the picture, but it's it's here, and maybe you can just start make that text out. It's black text on a mixed color background, so it's very, very hard to read. We're gonna modify that text so it's a bit easier to read. Uh, we'll say our uh, photo credit has some padding around it. I'll do four points. Has a background of color dot black. Has a font of a caption. And has a foreground color, oops, foreground color of dot white. Boom, so it stands here out much more clearly. Uh, now, important tip for you, um, the order of modifiers matters in Swift UI. If we'd taken that background modifier and put it before the padding, it would look different. Uh, if I zoom in a little bit so you can see how it looks at full size, here's our text here. If I move the background so it's before the padding, uh, it looks actually different. You can see 
uh, the black only extends around the text itself. There's no more padding here. This is because we're asking SwiftUI to run these modifiers in order. Add some padding first, then color the whole background, including the padding, black. Whereas when it's the other way around, it would color it black and then add padding uncolored, which you don't want. Okay, so padding, then background color. This is more visible now, but it's not ideal. Um, really, it shouldn't be in the middle of the thing, it should be just sort of on one side, down this sort of bottom right corner. And we can do that by modifying our Z stack. In the same way how we had an alignment for our item row to be leading, our Z stack can have alignment here. Alignment of dot uh, bottom trailing. So the bottom right corner of our image right there. And you can even, if you want to, just move it slightly off there. We could say after our foreground color, I want an offset uh, X, Y of minus five, minus five. So pull it in by five points from the bottom and five points from the right edge. And that's looking much better. Now, there is one more layout issue here, but you might not have noticed it yet, depending on how you're using Xcode and what uh, simulator you're using currently. I've been using the iPhone 12 Pro Max canvas and uh, simulator so far, which is a, a, a huge screen. It's the, it's, it's the biggest iPhone screen that is at the time of recording. However, if I say, you know, let's out of curiosity, let's see how it looks with the iPod Touch seventh generation, a much smaller device. Look at it now. Photo Joseph Go, it now says. It's cut off the photographer's name. It's kind of running off the edge of the screen to the far right, so over here somewhere. Uh, which isn't ideal. We don't want that at all. The layout is being warped. And this happens because uh, this image, our main image here, is always shown its natural size by default. That's how SwiftUI behaves. Whatever size the picture is, that's how big it's going to be on the screen. And in this case, our main image is too big for an iPod Touch 7th generation screen. It doesn't fit on the screen. It's too wide. And so it'll push off the edges. And in doing so, as it overflows, it'll let other things overflow. So the image hangs out, so the whole Z stack hangs out, so the credit hangs out too. Everything else kind of overflows from the available screen space. To fix this, we've got to add two new modifiers to our image to, to uh, make it look right. Uh, one is resizable. Allow me to stretch this picture. And you see it's now being stretched in a weird way, which you don't want. But let this thing be stretched. But also, scale it to fit, boom. And now it looks correct. Our image is gonna run edge to edge on all screen sizes, including the smaller one here and our larger 12 Pro Max, without overflowing, without leaving the edge of the screen. Now there's an alternative here, which is scaled to fill, and they do very, very similar things. Fit says, uh, ensure the whole space is, is used, but if you've got to warp the aspect ratio, don't. Don't warp it. Leave a bit of white space if you need to, to make it fit correctly on the screen. And Phil will say, ensure the whole space is used. Don't break the aspect ratio again, keep the good aspect ratio. But if there's white space, just fill it up. Crop the image if you need to, like miss bits off the edge in our case, in order to fill the vertical space. Uh, so both automatically keep the correct aspect ratio, but how they fill the space differs. In this case, fit will always show all the image, even if it leaves a little bit of white space around here and there. 